So just in case you've been asleep for most of the morning, um, we're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 uh, this morning. It's uh, not often my husband inspires me. Uh, no, that's not true. He's a, he's a daily inspiration to me. <laughs> <laughs> Did you miss all of that? Yes. Good. If you were at the prayer breakfast um, last week, Ian set up a challenge um, to us um, to, and I thought maybe we could all join in this. Um, and it was to read this passage, this uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, um, every day for a month and just see how God spoke to us through it. We could read different translations or, you know, whatever. Just that was the thing, to, to read it for a month and then maybe at the end of that month get together to see how God had, you know, what God said to, to us through the passage because everybody obviously gets different things. So uh, that, was, that was my thought that I, because I had just one week, um, we could do this uh, this week. So we're starting off um, with this in mind. Paul here is writing to the Corinthians, the Christians at Corinth, and he's trying to encourage them by reminding them what they've got and just how precious it is. I read for one of the, past, uh, one of the days during the week from Tom Wright's uh, translation. He was a, a bishop of Durham, and it read like this, verse 1, and I thought it was rather good. For this reason... Since we have this work entrusted to us in accordance with the mercy we have received, we don't lose heart. If only that were true, because we do lose heart, don't we? You and I know that. We do become discouraged. We do get down, maybe to the point of even giving up. Because, I think, we don't take the whole verse. We take half of the verse and we get stuck with, we have this work. And we think, oh, I can't do it, I can't cope, it's too much. We don't get to the other bit that says, um, in, but, you know, this work, God's work, entrusted to us in accordance with the mercy we have received. If we put that all together, I don't think we get quite as weary and quite as tired because God is saying, yes, I've given you work to do, but look at the mercy and grace that I've shown to you. That's more than enough to get you going. In other words, it's not a one-sided deal uh, for poor old us. You know, God's there and he's got it all sorted out and it far outweighs anything we can do. So uh, just for a minute, just think about the mercy and the grace that God has given you this week, just this week. And it's, it's quite amazing, really. I don't know if you remember uh, Monty Python. I wasn't a great fan, I've got to say. But you remember the, the famous Roman sketch where, you know, what have the Romans ever done for us? Well, there was the baths. Well, yeah, OK. Oh, well, there was the, you know, the roads. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. And there was the aqueduct. Yeah, what have the Romans ever done for us? Well, I kind of adapted that to uh, what has God ever done for us? Well, if I was going to tell you the whole story, I would be here all week, but I've just listed a few things just to get your minds going. What has God ever done for us? Well, he sent his son to earth. We've just remembered that in communion. Part of the heavenly trinity. And he sent Jesus to be a human being, a man living on the earth. What has God ever done for us? Well, he made Jesus an example by sending him to earth, by him being a servant during his earthly ministry. God also demanded that he died on a, de on, a, on a cross, totally undeserved, a cruel death. What's God done for us? Well, he forgives us all the wrong things that we do constantly. He walks with us every day. He's promised to support us in the difficult times, and we all have them. And he doesn't keep account of wrongs. He promises, among many things, eternal life if we believe in Christ's redemption. And that's just a little bit of what God has done for us. You can add more to it yourself, I'm sure. 
You know, sometimes people uh, want a favour from us and they come and they say, um, I know it's a big ask, but when we think about it, our entrusted work is a very little ask in comparison to what God has done. You know, where would you or I be without God's mercy and grace? I know I would be in a worse place than I am now. You see, no matter how we try, we unconsciously slip into the mistaken notion that our service to God is our work. I do it all the time. But we've read the work entrusted to us isn't ours. It's God's. God in his mercy allows us, if you like, gives us permission to work in service for him. But if we try to balance things up, if we were to weigh, you know, on one side what we've received from God and actually what we give him back, it's never going to be an even balance on the scales because God's mercy far outweighs anything we say or do. You know, as Christians, we should be grateful people, and I'm sure we are some of the time, but sometimes our human minds can con us into thinking that we're actually uh, owed something, that God owes us something. That's just not true. In verse 7, we read this verse, and you'll know it very easily, um, very well. But we have this treasure in earthen pots, so that the extraordinary quality of the power may belong to God and not us. You know, in biblical times, I learned this this week, I didn't know this. In biblical times, Alan, of course, will have known all about this, um, used to make clay pots to keep their valuables in because obviously they didn't have safes or they didn't have lockups or, you know, padlocks or anything like that. So if they had anything valuable, they would make a clay pot and put this, the valuable things inside. Um, just think, this stack of God's generosity, he gives to us, he puts into us the fragile, broken vessels that we are. But he does it so that the glory can be all his and we can't claim any of the, the good bits. Because, you know, without God, we can't do a thing mm -hmm. successfully. So my question is, are we a worthy container of God's glory and light? Well, not in our own right, we're not. Because being smart isn't enough. Being pure isn't enough. Being talented isn't enough. Even being spiritual isn't enough. You see, Jesus wasn't embarrassed to live and die in an earthly vessel, in a human body. And God isn't embarrassed to use clay pots like you and me in his service. So when you're feeling down, when you're feeling you're useless, when you're feeling, what's the point? Just remind yourself that, you know, we are just the vessel and God is using us. So, does that mean then, if, you know, God's, uh, you know, got a hold of us that, uh, and his great mercy and grace is in our lives, that everything's going to be plain sailing and there's going to be no bumpy rides? No. We all know that's not true. Look at verse 8, and it says, and this is Tom Wright's translation, we're under all kinds of pressure but we're not crushed completely. Yeah, life gets tough at times, and sometimes we feel that, you know, there's no way out. Well, there is. We're at a loss, but we're not at our wit's end. Sometimes you feel as though you're at your wit's end, and you feel, you know, there's nowhere to go, what are you gonna do? We're persecuted, but we're not abandoned. We're cast low, but not destroyed. Yes, life is, throws bricks sometimes, and we hurt, and, you know, we, we look around for where we can get comfort, and we don't see any, and we see that our prayers, we know God answers prayer, but he doesn't seem to be listening at the moment to us, and we pray for a long time and nothing happens. All of that. But, you know, the one thing that it tells me here is that 
all of this can happen and does. And yet, with faith, we can withstand all of these trials and the rest of it. We're following, you know, in a biblical, sound biblical footsteps because, you know, people in Bible times didn't have it easy. Look no further than Job. And, there was a, and there's a lot of other people who struggled just like we do. We think it's just for us, you know, the times are hard, but that's not true. So, yes, we suffer for a time. And there will be tears, yes. And there will be personal struggles and difficulty. But you know that eventually joy comes in the morning. What does God do for us? Put it very simply, because I'm a simple soul, he loves us unconditionally and forever. You know, Paul preached uh, the gospel that he loved so much. He preached it very openly. He preached it very honestly, very boldly at times. He would stand up in front of people with danger to his life and very humbly. But he did it all through the power of God in his life. And that's not a bad template for you and me to, to have, you know, really. So just to summarise my thoughts for this morning and what this passage said to me during the week, fair enough, I've had a, a whole week to think about it, uh, I made a list of do's and don'ts. I think it's easier sometimes. I'm a lady of lists. I always have a list in my pocket for one thing or another. And so the do's that are picked out from here. Stick to the truth. No matter what we do, we need to stick to God's word, which is the truth. Preach Jesus. And that doesn't mean just standing here talking. It's, it's just living our life wherever we are to people. Experience all of life with God at our side. Don't think we know it all and we can do it all without and we can't. Share our beliefs. We've been told many times to do that. But always to give God the glory. Never to think that we are, you know, the, the, the people that need worship and adoration. It's not, it's God. And allow God us to renew us every day. Because we need that. We'll read a verse in a minute that just reminds us so much of that. And fix our eyes on Jesus. And if we do all of those things, and it's a big ask, we will feel God's benefit. Don't, it's a much smaller list, don't twist God's word, don't manipulate, don't be deceptive, and don't lose heart. Can I leave you with the first, the verses at the beginning and the end of this passage from the message? That was another um, translation I, led, I read this week. Since God has so generously led us in on what he's doing, we are not about to throw up our hands and walk off the job just because we run into occasional hard times. So we'll not give up. How could we? Even though on the outside it often looks like things are falling apart on us, on the inside where God is making new life, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. I thought that was lovely. That yes, things around us can be falling apart. You look at the country you look on the, and you think, oh. But on the inside where God is working, his purpose out, God is making new life every day. Not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. That's what I got from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 this week. I might get something else if I continue to read it. So if I can inspire you or encourage you to start reading this passage, it's only 17 verses, 18 verses, I beg your pardon, every day, just see how God can talk to you through it.